and welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Delta Striker 4.5 to 30 by 56. So this optic has everything you could possibly want if you're doing long range shooting or PRS. We have a 56 millimeter objective. We have a long eye relief, a super wide magnification range between 4.5 and 30, a 34 millimeter tube that houses 30 mils of internal adjustment. We have a zero stop, a little revolution indicator here. The more you turn, the more it goes upwards. We have illumination setting. We've got everything and a few options for reticles. So. Starting with the price, this is no cheap scope. This is starting to get in the semi-premium right here. We're talking about $2,200 Canadian or about, uh, in the US I found one about 1590 So these are just kind of ballpark prices. But there are a lot of optics in this price point and the market is very, very competitive. So Delta, from what I've read, is a Polish company that has their optics manufactured in Japan. So from what I understand, they get them designed in Poland and they get them manufactured in Japan, which is, exactly what most companies do. You'll be surprised to see a company uh, design their optic in the US and actually have them made in the US. That's very, very uncommon, or even in Poland. So there are a few versions of this optic. For example, there is the LPVO, which is a completely different beast, and there is the 5 to 50 by 56 millimeter objective. So something obviously more designed for F class. This one is definitely more for the PRS long range market. So let's start off with the glass quality. So I'm gonna make sure there's a ton of scope footage or of scope see-through footage of this optic. I mean, this is an expensive scope. I trust you want to see as much good representation of the glass or as much representation of the glass before you buy it. Also, I'll be leaving some links in the descriptions below for you. If you do decide to purchase it, these are affiliate links and they do help the channel. So this is a 5G tower at about 2000 meters. So we're talking meters. Typically I do talk in meters because I am in Canada. But uh, the Delta Striker is an optic that uh, they only have mils. So there's no MOA version. Yeah. So this is a 5G tower at about 2,000 meters in yards. It's probably around 2,300 yards or something like that. And you know what? The glass in this is really, really nice. From my observations and comparable scopes, the glass in this is really, really nice. So that was the 5G tower. This is a barn at about 400 meters. What I really want you to look at is the discoloration and just how you can see the fine details, all the little, the discoloration from the rust. And this is another barn at 100 meters. Lots of beautiful rust there. And this is that same barn, just a different section of the barn that's not as rusted. <laughs> okay, and one more scope footage. Uh, this is a satellite dish at about 380 or so yards. Okay, back to business. So the glass in this optic is really, really nice. They certainly did not cheap out on the glass and I kind of didn't expect them to cheap out on the glass. I've heard some really good things about the glass and I certainly wasn't disappointed and I don't think you will be either. And now keep in mind, if you get the uh, five to 50 magnification version, it's gonna be darker. That's just what happens when you crank up the same glass to 50 magnification, when you crank it up more, you are gonna get, uh, you're not gonna get quite as good at an image. And actually, I got a chance to try the 5 to 50 by 56 back when I was in Italy, testing the XPR, so the Evor XPR. And it was really, really nice. But there was a few differences between this optic and that. When, uh, what I'm talking about is in terms of quality control. Uh, those versions were smoother and slightly e more easier to operate than this one. So in terms of the magnification, those ones, the 5 to 50s, were actually a little bit smoother. And this one, I have a good few miles on it and it has had a chance to break itself in and it is much smoother than it was originally. So in the past, this did feel a little bit more stiff. Then again, it was a little bit colder out. So that might've been a contributing factor. So next, let's go to the range. This gun can shoot. All right, now let's go do some long range shooting. We hit it. I think we hit it high, just almost off the edge. I'm gonna bring it down by a couple clicks. Three clicks.
hit it a bit right, but definitely lower this time. Too low that time. Okay, same for the medium one. <laughs> oh, I can tell the glass is really good in this one. I can tell that that strap looks like it's pretty much torn right off. Unfortunately. Nailed it. <laughs> oh, I love this. <laughs> this gun is hella accurate. And I mean, with this scope, it's a really nice combination. That was a lot of fun. So making up my hits, my misses, no problem with this object. It's absolutely made for long range shooting. And I mean, really, realistically, I probably should be shooting at around, you know, 1,500, 2,000 with an optic at this price. I mean, it's good quality. And typically I recommend, you know, about $1 per yard per meter if you really want to be satisfied. That's typically my rule of thumb. If you want to be satisfied long term, that's where you should be aiming. So next we have the eye relief. So at the lowest magnification, it has the lowest magnification of 4.5, we have 3.8 inches of eye relief. At the highest magnification of 30, we have 3.1. Now that is getting on the short side. Actually, that is the sh on the short side. And if you have this on a really heavy recoiling rifle, well, you might really appreciate this rubber grommet here because it could come and bite you. <laughs> so that's just something to keep in mind. And additionally, the eye box is pretty tight when it comes to 30. At 4.5, super forgiving, but at 30, you know, you're getting a tight eye box. Next, let's talk about the field of view. Uh, this one, I did you the favor of converting from the uh, metric system to the imperial system because that's all they had listed on their website. It took a little bit of math and a little magic, but I figured out what it was. So at the highest magnification of 30, we have 3.9 feet at 100 yards, which is really great. I mean, there's other optics at 25 magnification that have four as well. So four at 30 or four at 25, I'm going to take the four at 30. And at the lowest magnification of 4.5, we have 24.8 feet. So definitely really, really doing good in terms of field of view. Next, we have the Focus Parallax. So uh, this, I'm pretty sure, starts in terms of meters and not necessarily in terms of yards. It starts all the way at 23. So actually, you could do pretty good on an air gun with this. It goes 23, 30, 40, 50, 60, 75, 100, 150, 200, 300, 500, 800, 1,000, 1,500, and infinity, and a little bit past infinity, actually. And it's really, really smooth. It's also a little bit bigger, so it'll give you a good purchase for your hands. And it's nice and smooth. You really won't be disappointed in this whatsoever. Next, let's talk about the turrets. So there's a lot to unpack about these turrets. First of all, we have a zero stop. Really nice, really convenient to have. We have a revolution indicator. The more you turn, the more this elevates. Very convenient. One thing I'm not really, actually two things I'm not crazy about on this is the way you remove these. So it's toolless to remove the turret cap and you have to turn this. But the thing is, it's really stiff, especially in the winter. I mean, I was trying to turn this and it was getting a little bit of white dust around this, which if you know what that is, it's my skin being grinded away trying to turn this damn thing. So um, I did end up removing this. You simply pop this out. I put some grease around it and I put it back together. It still isn't super smooth, but it's smoother than it was. But I think it's maybe because of the warmer weather, it's now a little bit smoother. But yeah, definitely not the easiest to remove. And also, since if you have a zero stop, you're going to need a tool. So having a toolless removal of the turret cap, well, you're still going to need your darn tool to adjust your zero stop, unless you didn't put it on to begin with. 
One thing to mention about that specifically is since I've tried the 5 to 50 magnification, I noticed those ones, they were much, much easier to remove. Like, I was not struggling to get them off at all. I just twist, 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 and they came right off. So I don't know if it's quality control or what it is, but it was much easier on those ones. Another thing, my second complaint, let me just put this back on, is these have locking turrets, which is a good thing, which is obviously a good thing, but they don't go up very high. Now, typically that's not an issue, but as you start turning, if you ever so slightly apply any slight downwards pressure, they kind of lock. They go into one of those little teeth and they just lock. And then you're like, damn it, you have to lift back up and, and start turning again. Ah, uh, yeah, it's happened to me more than once that I lift, I start turning and oh, 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 what's going on? Oh, I must have applied a little bit of downward pressure and it's locked. That's not really ideal in my opinion. I feel they could have maybe made it so they lift a little bit higher just so that could not happen. Otherwise, really, really great job on these turrets. But anyway, let's get down to the important part. Let's test the tracking. All right, let's start with the box test. Let's go three mils down. Okay, three mils left. Back at zero. And back at zero. Looking good. Let's validate the tracking. Back to three down. Three, six, nine, 12. Looking damn good. 15. Maybe like a hair, really just a hair off right there. All right, let's see how much internal adjustment it has. Back up this magnification. Now this thing has a lot of adjustment. That's it. Back to zero. All right, let's see how much windage adjustment it has. That's it. And that's it. All right, let's see if there's any point of impact change with magnification. So it tracks great, it does a box test just fine, as you would expect on an optic at this price. And if you are looking to test one of your optics, check out Box to Bench Precision's targets. That's actually how we test all our turrets in these videos. One thing I did not mention is this has 30 mils of internal adjustment for the elevation and 15 for the windage, so a ton. If you want to do extreme long range, well, this may be the optic you want to use. Next, let's talk about the reticle. So we have a few options in terms of reticle selection. You have the LRD-1T, the LRD-1P, the DLR-1, and it is illuminated. You have 10 illumination settings and you have an offsetting between each illumination setting. So really quite nice. In terms of the reticle, it is a chunky reticle. I don't think that's something they can kind of get around just because we're talking 30 magnification. And if you want a reticle that's kind of useful even around eight, you need to have it fairly chunky at 30 or else it's going to be invisible at eight. And yes, if you're doing PRS, you're usually not on 30 anyway. Lastly, but absolutely not least, the warranty. Possibly one of the most important parts. So Delta has a lifetime transferable, no proof needed warranty, which is amazing to have. So that's my review on the Delta Striker. The Delta Striker is a really great optic. Um, this one I feel like could have been a little bit better just because I've seen the ones that I tried in Italy and they were a little bit smoother in terms of magnification and their uh, toolless re-zero thing was a little bit smoother. Than <laughs> so yeah, anyway, a really, really great optic. And if you are looking at picking one up, I'm gonna leave some links in the descriptions below. Um, they just do, they does help support the channel. They are affiliate links and it does really help the channel. So thanks again for watching Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews.